Alright everybody, welcome to the Asia version of Pandora's Mayhem for September 2021. Let's get started. We're going to jump right in. It's going to be Kao Gao on the left and Kagra on the right. Kagra did fantastic last time I had something for my brothers across the Pacific Ocean. So I'm excited to see what happens. We have Christy on deck for Kao Gao. I am really excited to see some Christy action here on Pandora's Mayhem which will be uploaded soon to Arturo's channel, MYC Furby. Trying to increase that exposure for all those who love Street Fighter Cross Tekken and for all those looking to play Street Fighter Cross Tekken as we approach 2022. Kagra is going with the uh, no gem hustle. He wants to handicap himself. He wants to show that I have no need to take off my cloak. You'll have to make me uh, take off my turban, my weighted clothing, if you want to scare me. So far, Kagra is having his way with Kao Gao. I really want to see Christy do well, so I hope Kao Gao turns us around. Look at those posts. Beautiful. That crouch medium punch of Christy is such a long-reaching button. Crouching medium kick's also really good. Uh, Christy has a lot of really really active, far-reaching buttons that allow her to easily bring in her partner or even uh, CADC and move forward. So tag canceling in Kazuya. Kazuya, no introduction necessary. He is a force to reckon with, but he's going to need to be leery of Kami using her low ceiling jump to empty low him because his Legend Gophis will not be low attacks. So be careful, Kazuya. Make sure your anti-airs are on point. Fortunately, he was caught swinging and Sakura made him pay for it. That is a quick 1-0 lead for Kagra. Alright, looks like Kao Gao has gotten his rust off like a start. Oh, that's not safe. So yeah, if you're going to be boosting, make sure you confirm properly. This game has rollback, and given that I've split things into region, because after all, it is 10-year-old Capcom in-house rollback, there won't be uh, too many excuses to uh, have those unsafe boosts. Make sure you are playing clean. There are ways to boost confirm safely. Usually a light and a medium. Big raw launcher. There you go. I was waiting for that. There is an option select. You'd have meter for it. But if you time your alpha counter properly on jump-ins, if they go for an empty jump, it will often select into raw launcher and stuff that in a huge way. He didn't have meter to truly often select, but clearly he saw Cogger was going for that way too much and made it pay for it. Good push. He's got the corner. Just be careful. There we go. Oh, no! That was an alpha counter. Nobody hoped. Cogger looked well again. Kao Gao had him scouted. Kazuya moving in. He's got those attack gems burning. This is where uh, the gems come into play. If Kami had uh, some defense gems on, that might not have hurt as much. Kami does not have the average thousand health like many other characters do. So everything is going to hurt that much more against Kami. There you go. He didn't do that before. Oh, that was clean. Perfectly spaced with punish with that skin. Heavy kick. Kami is back in. I want to see Christy defend the skies. Ooh, okay. Kami force wave EX cannon drill. Farewell launcher. She went for a crouching heavy punch. Christy had none of it. Look how much damage peeled off as a result. Look at this. Uh, be careful. Don't be DPing so much. Kami has a... Oh, sorry, don't be uh, jumping in so much. Kami has a fantastic DP. I'm getting warmed up, guys. And, okay. Oh, you got a high-low mix, and that did the trick. That was nice. That was nice. I like that. Spacing a mix-up like that on incoming, that was sick, Kao Gao. What happened there was when Christy went for her EX rainbow kicks, she tag canceled Kazuya, and then Kazuya kind of pushed forward so that the block stun deteriorate just in time to create a high-low mix, and Kazuya took full advantage, just waited for that EX rainbow kick to end, and paid off dividends. 
Oh, big jump. Look at that move. I talked about Crispy anti-airing, and her crouching heavy punch is a really good button. But notice how much it is pushing her forward. That is something that is really harming her against Kami. I'm surprised Sakura uh, stuffed him like that. Yeah, looking for it there. Oh, big jumping again! Watch your head, guys. Throw and chip out. No need. Cross up again. Watch your head, Cow Gow. And yes, these are replays. So the way this works for those who are uninitiated. Oh no, that was a good one. Sadly, he didn't get the results he wanted. He got, finally got a poke, but it wasn't counter hit. Otherwise, it would have floated. But yeah, these are replays. For those uninitiated, what I do is I collect replays from the battle logs and then use the broadcast lobby to collect them in bulk within minutes. And then we stream them once we have everything. The spectator mode is sadly not the best in the PC version. And Kagra is up 2-1 as I'm explaining that. As a reminder, these are first 2-5. So Kaogao needs to make adjustments and make them soon. He relies very heavily on that crouching heavy punch, as he should. Wonderfully spaced crouching medium punch. I mentioned those posts of Christy go a long way. Something else that Christy has that's really nice is a sick stand heavy punch. Both the close and far version of stand heavy punch reach a very long way. Both hits are cancelable. So easy confirms into CADC or continue the combo into those rainbow kicks, which are a juggle stage starter, so she gets good damage off that. I just want to see Kaogao be mindful of when Sakura is in that kill zone. Because yeah, there you go. That crouching heavy sorry, that jump heavy kick of Sakura. Kind of caught him unawares last time, so it led to a quick 2-1 lead for Kagura. Okay. I don't know he was trying there, but he got crowd shorted out. That's a nice DP. No neutral jump for you, my friend. Uh-huh. The block. Got thrown again. There you go. Raw launcher. Don't get fancy on me. Don't get fancy on me. You saw Christy swat down Cammy. That was her jump medium punch. That was a nice follow-up, too. Unfortunately, got caught sleeping. That sneaky, got heavy punch of Kami is paying off big dividends. Look at this. No gems necessary, but look how fast that meter is building. It's just the damage is scaling very heavily, especially because Chrissy has defense gems on. Kaogao has to take note of how Kami and Sakura are approaching because here you go. Caught him again. How? Kaogao's getting scouted right now. Kagura has been batting really high average on these jump-ins, getting everything. How will Kaogao turn this around? Kaogao burned all of his bar too, trying to get out of that. Kagura has had no need to burn bar for the most part. Already, like two bars already. Make it hurt. Good, convert. Uh -huh. Bringing Kazuya, what's the mix gonna be? He's got so many overheads. Alpha counter and bringing in Sakura, just a raw tag. Sakura going in heavy there. Luckily, it wasn't worse. And now Kaogao was stuck in the corner. How's he gonna get out? Kagura's waiting his turn and bringing the pain once again. Here comes Kami. Kami is definitely the. Actually, they're both damage dealers by themselves. That's why you usually see uh, Kupo use attack gems for Sakura because he hurts so much already. Meter also works really well for Sakura. And what's also working for Sakura is a 3-1 lead. It's all or nothing. Okie dokie. So I hyped up Chrissy earlier. You see how long, how far those pokes reach. Look at those long limbs. And there's definitely an advantage of using those to keep Sakura at bay. It's just Kao there you go, there's that jump in. I said find how Sakura is attacking. That's when you can make something happen. Because Sakura has to largely fight her way in in this game. She has some good pokes, and she has good walk speed, but she's typically best when she's in your grill. Just like in Street Fire for Free Square 5, pretty much. 
So, yeah. Try and keep Sakura out and punish her when she's trying to force her way in. Because Chris can definitely make something happen. In my personal opinion, though, I think Kazuya is a better point character than Christy. Yes, Christy has longer limbs, but I think Christy really benefits from uh, playing a part frame trap, part keep away game as an anchor, while Kazuya can force away easily. Because his also, he's also got really good limbs, and he has lots of ways to force his way in. Kazuya can work either way, though. And there's arguments for Christy on point as well, so I could see either way. You have what it takes? For those who don't know, Christie's rainbow kicks go through fireballs. But I think Kaogao might realize that Kagura is just with punishing him at will. So he's trying to be careful. Nice, good. Don't let her jump in free. Many Kazuyas use that far heavy punch to catch people unaware. That has deceptive activity frames. And then he buffers into electrics. Be careful with those electrics by themselves, though. Kami's got some good crouching attacks on her own right, particularly low attacks. It's not so much crouching attacks that beat it, but low, crouching low attacks. Uh, stand low attacks can beat it too, but typically they're a bit slower than Mocha crouch low attacks, so... Usually, depending on who activates first, that'll depend on who wins that exchange. Uh, I know Kaogao really wants some kind of counter hit on these anti-airs. Just having them stuffed with uh, no extra benefits, it just resets neutral. And good news is Kaogao has a life lead. Uh, uh, yeah, that's going to hurt. Yes, cash out. Don't give a chance to breathe. Kaga's making all the right calls in these situations, so don't even get a chance to get back up. Burn the resource if you got it. It's all or nothing now. Fight. Yeah, there you go. Defend the skies. I mentioned that Crouch Heavy Punch is super good. But watch yourself. There you go. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. There's going to be an EXDP coming, and it did. It didn't even tag cancel until the follow up. That's how faithful Kaga was in that. I that, or his reaction just godlike. He might have waited until uh, the first um, show can hit and then tag cancel or not to make his block or hit. Because a lot of people like to use the uh, EXDP of Sakura as a quick tag cancel and then have the partner come in as the second DP comes down. Whoa! Air to air! And then tag canceling from Tatsu. That's not something you see every day. Kagura has been putting in work with this team. I remember when Kagura was playing Akuma. I think the last time we had him here on NYC Furby. So it is nice to see that he is added Sakura to the mix. Sakura's a fun character. I haven't really played Sakura much. But she has her benefits. She's not the best character. And a lot of people, myself included, have her in the bottom five. But she definitely has her uses, as you are seeing right now. Kagura is on set point. Mission complete. Pretty impressive so far. Kagura putting on a clinic with Kami and Sakura. Kaogao was a very talented player. I've played Kaogao a few times. To be fair though, it's overseas connection, but I know he knows enough where he's not a complete novice. But Kagura's been on fire. I have never played Kagura in person, by the way. I have to wonder how he would have done had he entered my offline tournaments when those were still viable before the end of the world happened. And as I'm talking, Kaogao showing signs of life. Dominant first round. Kazuya melting those life bars as he typically does. As I say before, Christy and Kazuya are both switch hitters. You can have them in the front or the back each, and it wouldn't be the worst idea. However, Kagura has been merciless, making all the right calls, knowing exactly when to jump in, since neither of these characters really have a DP that would stuff jump in the way other DPs would. Yeah, Legend of Godfist is a good option, but it's pretty situational. 
Kagura is picking just the right spot to land to know that if a Godzilla were to come, he could block it or even empty low it. And as I'm talking, Kaogao again turning things around, cashing out. They're still in Chat Gem burning. But YOLO cannon drill. Finally, a throw break. I like to see that. There's an earlier game where Kaogao's getting his life bar melted just through throws. Nice. Ripper empty by herself. Still. Christie's turn. That could have been dire. Catch again. Not finishing your food there. Too very oh, there you go. That jump in lingered longer than Sakura expected. And Kaogao has extended his set just a little while longer. Good stuff from Kagura. There are definitely a lot of people who feel a certain way about gems. So I have to imagine Kagura's got to be the hero when I upload this. Going with no gems, no uh, no meta in that regard, even through defaults. Kaogao has switched. So I guess I played this out of order. It happens. Uh, Kaogao has switched to Alyssa and Kazuya. Again, for those wondering, I get these replays through the battle log. So I uh, might have missed on my playlist when I ordered these. I had to keep mind of when they switch characters to know who's playing what. Anyway, regardless, Kagura is still up 4-2. Or Kagura, yeah, Kagura is still up 4-2. Oh no, yeah, sadly that doesn't hit Crouchers the way you're expecting. The switch is not working out for Kaogao. I wonder if maybe I play these out of order. I'm starting to think maybe I play out of order. This actually might be the second match rather than the seventh match. No worries. As I said before, spectator mode is kind of iffy. So this is how we're going to do things so we don't have to worry about lag or things like that. Anyway, Sakura versus Alyssa. Look at them, you see them teaming thanks to Kubo. Oh, that's nice. Cross-cutting DP. Bringing the pain. Bringing the pain some more. Nice, good thorn right there. Yeah, be careful. You know Sakura's looking to catch Kazuya's toes. But empty jump. Kaogao has been lit up by the ah, raw launcher. I'm about to say, Kaogao has been lit up by uh, these empty jumps, especially on cross up. Sometimes it's best to take the throw, especially if you have a lot of life to work with. The advantage of having a life lead is if the opponent does manage to come in, it's not going to be disastrous. It's on them to open you up. So don't, uh, don't be intimidated. Just take the throw sometimes. Yeah, it'll build up over time, but you have more chances because neutrals reset every single time you're thrown. And by that, it means a hard knockdown. Not so much that uh, neutral is truly, like they're both standing up. You know what I mean. It's a hard knockdown. Now they have to open you up and in cross Tekken, you can roll forward. So whatever kind of uh, OP option they're going for, it's not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. It's up to them to figure out how you're going to wake up. And you have more often just like wake up reverse and stuff like that. So that's what I mean. Alright, bringing in Candy early. Oh no! Again, whip punishing! Hagra has been fantastic with that. If you're gonna be throwing buttons or doing moves on Hagra, make sure that they hit even if he blocks. Hagra. I'd like what's Coming in? Oh no, he tried to back dash away and Ken was waiting for it. Confirms into Sakura. Coming down with the top. Didn't get the follow-up though. That juggles by the way. And it juggles meterless. No something, son. That's why I go for that neutral jump. Like that. See? He just waits for something and he already has an answer for it. He might actually get this. He got it. Kaogao stays alive. Things look dire. It is now 4-3. Kagura is losing his lead.
One board, it's tied. So I did. Yeah. I played match out of order. I'll be more mindful for the next one. But anyway, I've been singing Kagura's praises for this whole set and all these great, like that one, great decision. But because Pao Gao has uh, some gems on, is giving Pao Gao the chance to kind of turn this around. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that gems are a comeback mechanic. This is my defense of at least the default gems. We're going to leave the pay to win gems in the trash where they belong. This is just the, the defaults. Gems reward you for playing correctly. So because Kao Gao managed to make the right call and make the right adjustments, when he does, he gets extra benefits for doing so that allow him to keep that momentum going. Not so much coming back from a deficit, but keep whatever momentum he does game and keep it going a big way. It rewards you for playing correctly. The defense gems activate passively. That means if you're blocking or you're throw breaking or you're alpha countering or you're just getting hit, they'll activate passively. But attack gems require you to actually hit people or they require you to break a throw. They require you for playing correctly. Same with the meter gems. They reward you for playing well. That's why I am fine and I encourage the use of the default gems in term and play, which were a lot anyway from the very start. That is why I I support gems in that regard. It doesn't give you a crutch for playing poorly, but it does give you a boost for playing well. It gives you some positive reinforcement. For now though, Kagura feels no need to take any reinforcement. He feels that his reinforcement will be delivered intermittently through victory as he is now on set point. Nah, you could have. I like that poke there. So I want to see how to do more the next time he does play uh, these characters. He has both Christy and Lissa have two hitting um, moves that allow them to confirm into what they want to do next. And do so with very little risk. Oh, depending on the opponent's uh, the opponent's uh, tools. And or whatever reason they have meter wise. I want to see Kao Gao be more consistent with his confirms whether he gets a hit or block with those multi-hitting moves. Because that makes both Christy and Alyssa very competent high-level play. Having a two-hit confirm to either go to a launcher, go to a special, or CADC out of danger, that's a really good skill to have in high-level play. And I haven't seen Kao Gao do that much. I think Kazuya wanted that jump B to cross up, but that cross under into a confirm completely stopped it dead. Yeah, he's doing it way, way too early. And Kami's just having free range do what she wants when Kazuya lands. It's way too early. Is he expecting like an air to air maybe? I'm not sure. Ah, uh, they make it first. Good punish. Great punish. And Kagura takes it five to three. Kaogao should science a life. And Kagura held on. Good stuff. That's gonna be a comeback there. Next up, we're gonna have Kagura and Hazama. Hazama, my faithful organizer across the sea. He is the guy who runs these things in my stead when I host them. He has been playing this game a long time. I remember meeting him back at EVO 2015. And after I won the side tournament EVO, this Julia Jayu team bodied me. I ran it back the next EVO. Um, I guess when tournament starts, uh, that's when it really counts, you know? All the same, he beat me 10-1 um, after the 2017 turn when I won. So he definitely made me hungry for next time. Let's see how well he does here. Yeah, he was the EVO Japan champion in 2018. So when EVO uh, 2018 happened in Vegas a few months later, there was a there was some anticipation because he beat me in a first 10 after EVO 2017. And he won EVO Japan, so it was like, all right, the EVO champion of 2017 defeated EVO Japan champ, what's gonna happen? And we faced each other first off. That was a that was a pretty good moment. And Kagura is taking his moment, just decimating Azama that first round. Alrighty, 
we saw Kagura get a lot of jump-ins before. Hazama actually seems pretty good neutral. So I want to see him in fourth. He has a good DP with uh, Julia. He's got some good limbs. He has great solo damage. And obviously when Xiaoyu comes in, it just mixes for days and days. Xiaoyu makes people bleed. I see that Hazama is using balance sets. I am not sure if that's the best pick against Kagura, just based on what I saw against Kaogao. I would prefer if Julia had either an attack set, a meter set, or defense set. She's good with any of those three. Xiaoyu is best with meter and attack. She needs to be on offense at all times. Her defense is not that great. Her pokes are not that great either. And now that neutral's reset, I like Sakura better in terms of just actually playing one-on-one. -on -one. All right, she's in. Jiayu's in. Jiayu's jumping in. Overhead. Ah, good job. Oh, no. Good sweep. Yeah, that's typically uh, Jiayu's most recent anti-air. Just a uh, crouch heavy kick to sweep. In earlier versions, she could loop that like five or six times as an anti-air as well as a tag-in. They nerfed that significantly. She can still... uh cancel that move into stuff though but because it was on a ground opponent rather than a uh, jumping opponent didn't have the same effect progress up one nothing all right so I mentioned earlier about Zhao Yu's crouch heavy kick. If Hazama can anti-air with it, he can uh, stance cancel that and then uh, stance cancel and tire back into neutral and get some really sick uh, um, full conversions off that. Let's see if there's a time that happens. Okay, meets the, as an air to air doesn't get uh, the juggle he wanted though. Stuff. That was a nice solid perfect. I mentioned earlier, once Xiaoyu's in your face, once she's in there, she's in there. So look at this, throwing a uh, more conservative game. Julia has ways around those fireballs, as you know, and I suspect Kagura is trying to bait Hazama to use them so he can whip punish with Sakura, as he typically does. Meantime, here comes Kami. Kami rushing in. Good job blocking. Be careful, though. Yeah. Something Kagura drove me nuts with the last time we played years ago was the fact that he walks back DP extremely well. Characters who make you think they're paralyzed in place, you try to go for a jump in, think their DP might uh, might whiff. When they walk backwards and then DP, that stuff drives me nuts. Because it's so good. It's the way you should be playing characters who have that kind of toolkit with them. Kami can be played a lot of different ways this game thanks to the attack cancel system. She's got great poke, she has fantastic damage, her DP's solid. Her DP is also fully invulnerable. Not every DP has that in this game. Her DP is a true DP all the way through. So, Yami just doing a basic Street Fighter neutral will get you pretty far in cross Tekken. That's why I'm surprised that uh, Kami is not leading off and Sakura is. Sakura is an anchor character, in my opinion. But I am seeing how a renaissance of point Sakura between Kagura and what I saw from Kupo months ago. So I'd be willing to reassess that stance. We're entering year 10 of Street Fighter Cross Tech, we're already thinking about uh, the full scope of every single character, thanks to a dedicated community that has kept this game going for years and years. This game never truly died, ladies and gentlemen. You just had to know where to look. Nice, good jump in. Didn't get the uh, follow-up though. I think he wanted uh, a few more light moves to get some perfect boost. Either that or he wanted like a really hard one. Uh, for those who don't know, when you see uh, those Magic Series combos, I'm calling them boost because that's what they're called boost combos in this game, or Cross Rush, another name for it. Um, they don't do the same damage as regular normals do. Even if you caught them fairly unscaled. So let's say you did medium kick, heavy kick. That heavy kick will not do the same damage as regular heavy kick, no matter what. 
Kagura is now up to nothing. One team wins. It's all or nothing. Yeah, as I was saying. So it's possible when Kagura dropped that uh, that link earlier, he was trying to link that heavy kick rather than boost into it. He wanted the full damage. And when you have no gems burning, and your other opponent does, better optimize everything. Like I said, Kagura is handicapping himself, and so far he has not had reason to take the handicap off. Kagura's been playing fantastic. Man, he's so good. I'm noticing this. The more I watch him, especially the last, uh, since the pandemic started, I've realized how good he is, and it's a shame that it'll be hard for me to play him in person at this point. But my goodness, I could definitely want to play this guy. He got the corner. I like that. So he sacrificed damage just to keep the corner and optimize situations like that. He puts the pressure on early. He's even catching everybody with these empty lows. I think that's good. Nah. Too heavy skill. Nah. There you go. Blocked a little bit, but got caught with uh, Kami's walking jab. Another fantastic button. Kagura now up 3-0. Mission complete. One team wins. Round two. Fight. Alrighty. How are you going to stop? All right, I see, uh, I, he might have done this last time, just went too quick, but I see that Kazama is now having attack gems on Xiaoyu, which I recommended earlier in this set. The thing is, you gotta get Xiaoyu in. Xiaoyu is not someone who can force away in by herself. She is very much an anchor character. She needs someone to do the work for her. And you saw Kazama challenge that DP. Didn't get anything. That Tatsu floated over it, and that was a big punish on Sakura's end. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, yeah. Not against Kami. Kami's stand medium kick is fantastic in this game, thanks to the boost system. She can punish things like that for free. Not everyone can. But Microwalk medium kick boost? My goodness. It's Christmas. Or Hanukkah. Happy Simpsons Tour, everybody. That was yesterday at the time of this streaming. Yeah, you want something. I see you want something. But Kagura having not Look at that. Boying with her food. Kami, you mean girl. Yeah. What can you do in that? That's exactly why Xiaoyu is not a point character. You just sit there and take it. Kagura was not falling for any of those feints. Nor should he. He has Kami. They didn't have Kami on point either. Like I said, Sakura's more an anchor character. She had some decent pokes though. So for the way Kagura's playing, it's working out marvelously. But just her pokes are kind of inconsistent. Same problem Ibiki has. There are some pokes that Ibiki has that on paper reach pretty far but in practice have a lot of problems, just how they kind of push her backwards when using them boost combos. And Uzama is looking grim. Man, I'm trying to stuff those crouching attacks with that thin medium kick, I see you. Raw launcher, all right, make it happen. Make it hurt, Hazama, come on. There, yeah, there's that armor, I was waiting for it. Got the link. I was worried for a second Cam was going to be a meat shield, but thankfully not. Sakura lost a lot of health that exchange and lost even more, and now she is down for the count. Signs of life from the house of Hazama. There's no turning back. Fight. Yeah, it's unreal, isn't it? I'm seeing a comment. What pressure? That is the name of the game for Xiaoyu. Look, you want that whiff punish. I see you. I see you, Kagura. Look at this. Ah, uh, finally, Hazama gets something. Wonderful air-to-air. -air. And now you got the corner. Uh, lost the corner. Got it back. That overhead. Uh-oh, coming down. Tatsu was late. It was late, but not fashionably late. Because it ruined Xiaoyu's fashion. Hitting her right in the grill. And shit him momentum back in Kagura's favor. Here comes Kami. Oh, so intimidating. Coming in with the shooting star, just doing it raw. He wants to mix that push out stuff you saw earlier with uh, Kao Gao and that Christy Kazuya team. Oh, 
lucky. There you go. You are so lucky, Zama, that you didn't get punished for that. Got a game. Oh, no! You had it! That was it! Hammy was in dire straits, but a critical drop. And the good news is you still have a lot of health. Follow up. Very smart of Kagura to keep Hammy in the back. There is no need to bring her in at this jump. Fish will have any meter gems to force her way back in and add a damage. Empty jump throw. Forcing her way in with the Tatsu. Xiaoyu didn't get the full conversion. Time is running out. Slightly in Kagura's favor. Oh, it is in Kagura's favor. This is smart. There you go. Just force her to get some ship. And Kagura clinches it. It's now 4-0, Kagura's on set point. Alrighty, Kazama, do something. I was hyping you up. You you bodied me a few years ago. I'm not, I'm starting to look free too now, my goodness. Alrighty. Are right, we gonna see a reverse 5-0? That would be godlike. Nice, good job with that elbow. Yeah, waiting for that elbow. I haven't seen Julia do that forward forward. In this game, it's forward forward two for your Tekken heads. It's forward forward one typically in Tekken, but it's medium punch in this game. I haven't seen Kazama use that move much throughout this set, and that's a really important move for Julia in this game. Just as in regular Tekken. The good news is, Kazama is... Oh, no! Maybe roll back caught him or something, but that's unfortunate. Or maybe he wanted a tag cancel. I don't know if it would have. They would have been happy birthday, but I guess it would worth a shot. Yeah, I think it would have been happy birthday. Julia would not have cleared the uh, the real estate in time to a block in time. When you try tag canceling those launches, be mindful of where you do it. If you do it and your back is close to a wall, it's going to be safer than if the opponent's back is close to the wall because then your partner has to run that much farther. That gives the opponent more time to perfect their punish and get a happy birthday. One more round should do it for Kagura. Do you have what it takes? Fight. Simple throw. Good. Poking. Oh no! So, Kazama tried uh, poke walking, but he got checked bad. I want to see. Oh, oh no, you're lucky. That wasn't worse. The close heavy kick through the proximity came out instead of the regular heavy kick, which is typically what Kagura has been boosting up until that point. There you go. Check it. Check it. Look at that. Bring the pain. Pokey? Man, you had two bars. Maybe? I don't know how super works in that situation, how many juggle points. Oh! Up. <laughs> that was nice. That was probably on accident. That was probably on accident, but it saved Hazama just a little while longer. Sakura encroaching on Julia's face. Got the cross of Tatsu. Perfect spacing. Thinking about encroaching on the space. Kagura beating everybody with these empty lows on cross up. Air to air and good block of the mixed. Don't be swinging, Jiao Yu. Keep it simple. Good. Throwing the rolls is a good way to keep things going. Only Jiao can get close enough to start her high low mix. That's going to determine. Oh no! Boost the head! Food to the head, that low angle jump heavy kick, making things happen. Nah. I think he knew a DP was coming, so he didn't do anything there. You see Julia sometimes go for a, a really deceptive overhead or an empty dash low. Oh no! No! Kagura doing the fancy punishes now. That wasn't even. No, that was actually fairly optimal. Raw cannon drill into a juggle, bringing Sakura. Still turned. Good. Good counter poke. What a perfect call out of the gap in that string. And Kagura moves forward 5 nothing. Mission complete. One team wins. 
And wrapping up our round robin for September, there will be another one October, mind you, is going to be Kao Gao and Hazuma. As you might have told, Kagra has won the Pandora's Mayhem. This will decide who is the runner up. Let's find out. So we saw that Alyssa Kazuya earlier towards the end. It might actually have been towards the beginning, I'm not sure. Either that or I need to establish uh you can't switch characters if you lose. I know one time Randy's saying they had custom gems running. And while that's unique, I try to keep these rule, uh, these rule sets consistent at this time. So, either way, it is Kao Gao and Hazuma. Let's see if Hazuma can dust off a 0-5 loss and try and get a consolation prize, you know? I do love these combos, though. So, Kagura obviously uh, proved himself very much ahead of the pack. Kao Gao came closer than Hazama did. That being said, both these players are pretty strong in their own right, so look forward to a clinic. DP, and here comes Kazuya. Alyssa's DP has very limited vulnerability. It's vulnerable to throws in particular. So when you are playing against Alyssa and you have her knocked down, be mindful of that. She has to spend extra resources to not get thrown. So mind her meter. And ah, uh, walk up raw launcher, the boldness of Cow Cow. Okay. Alyssa versus Julia. Julia has plenty of ways to get through that fish spam. But when Alyssa goes into destroy form, it stops off in its tracks. And when you are facing Alyssa's destroy form, she has a full air crush anti-air with the push of a button to stand heavy punch. Electric Gop is blowing through Julia's offense. Don't be swinging on Kazuya if you can help it. Not unless you have a low attack fast enough to beat that electric. Jiaoyu, that's smart. Jai has some good high-low options. Crouch jab, confirming into a KO. And Hizama has tied this game. <laughs> Look at that! That tension just walking up and then firing off a big crouch heavy punch. That move reaches deceptively far. Do not sleep on that crouch heavy punch whatsoever. It'll just catch you out of nowhere. And then she confirms the good stuff. I went at the hard way facing Lennon for uh, months and months and months. When he was not chilling with this kick. Shot you in big trouble. By the way, that's an overhead. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's an overhead. It does 100 damage. And it has sealed the deal for Cow Gao. He is up 1-0. Let's see how Julia makes her way through this neutral. Fine. 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 Yeah. Spinning out's a way to do it. And as she tries to do something, Alyssa catches her with her string. If that card combo continues on whip, and that can catch people off guard. That last hit counts as an overhead, by the way, but you can interrupt the sick and third hit reversal. And there's no way to put the brakes on it. So that's an automatic animation. It looks like a three-button move. It's actually a two-button move. It's a uh, far medium kick, far heavy punch. That is notation of that three-hit sequence you saw with the chainsaws. You can interrupt and react easily if you are keen to it. It's a pretty important part of this toolkit, so best if you were. Uh-oh. Now you try going in again, only to eat electric to face. All three attack gems burning. Where did your health go, Liz? Xiao Yu, saying Alyssa. My goodness, I'm thinking about her already. Okay. Fortunately, she's got Shadow where you wanted to do. Watch yourself, Hazama, especially you're low on health. To be fair, though, Julie wasn't faring much better. Xiao Yu's health bar melted after eating that electric. Having those attack gems burning, as I said, gems can reward you for playing well. That is the purpose of those default sets. Reward you for playing your game the way you want. 
If you want to express yourself, Street Fighter Cross Second is the game to do it. And Cow Guy was expressing himself by making Azama's life harder. Nice, good stuff from Cow Gao. Neutral jump, heavy kick. Azuya is back in, bringing the pain. It's a key charge. Oh, he didn't get the stun that he wanted. He might have caught Xiao Yu back at him. Cow Gao is up to nothing. I see that Hazama is slowing the balance set. I want to see those attack gems back on Xiao Yu. I want to see some meter gems or some defense gems on Julia. That would suit her very well as a point character. Okay, Xiao Yu's in. She got one attack gem burning. I think that's all she's got though. Xiao Yu with all attack gems burning is a force we reckon with. Again, she's in your face and her bread and butters are automatic. Ah, uh, yeah, not in that situation. Kazuya's got some pretty good jumping, too. Just like his old man and just like his son. That was a blink, too. That could have finished it, too, if he buffered um, Wave Dash. There we go. I mentioned earlier, that stand heavy punch cares nothing about what you're doing. It'll beat everything. Look at that. What are you doing, pressing buttons? It's not your turn. That is very much still Kazuya's turn. Yellow DP, Yellow DP! This time from the House of Cow Gow does not work out. Pandora finish? Let's go for it! Yes! The cold shoulder! Zama takes first blood in game three. That was great. Look how quick these matches are going, too. I saw earlier, Cogger just kind of laming them out once he had a life lead. And he could afford to do so, he had everybody's number in neutral. But the moment somebody puts their hands on somebody in this particular set, your life bar is going to go down at least 50%. Pokey time. Still stuck in the corner. Ah! Oh, backdash into Godfist. What are you doing? Get out of my grill. I'm keeping my half of my life bar. Neutral jump head kick again. I said earlier, Kazuya's jumpins, as well as his uh. Air-to-air -air options are pretty strong. I learned that the hard way facing Storm and Fighter recently, aka Specialist Evolve. Yeah. I'm lucky we have so many Kazuya loyalists now in the cross-second Discord. Be sure to join that. I'll put links up and get those to Arturo to share with everybody once this goes up on his YouTube. Because, yeah, there's definitely people playing cross-second all across the globe. He's got nowhere to look. And for those who don't know, yes, this is the PC version. Yes, it does work at Windows 10. Yes, it does have rollback. And yes, it does use Game for Windows Live. Want to learn how to use it? If you can't figure it out, just uh, let us know in the Discord. We will hook you up. I made a tutorial video to show you how you can get involved in all these wonderful Pandora's Mayhem action. Ah. Okay, I don't see people air to air that much. Uh oh. Yeah, be lame. Oh, there you go. That's what I want to see. Neutral jump, medium kick, catching Alyssa on a cross-up situation as she dashed in. Zama's on the board, only down 2-1. Okie doke. Zama has finally got a win in this particular edition of Pandora's Mayhem. Asia edition. For now, though, Kaogao swinging with those destroy form chainsaws. Catching again. Catching again with those Crouch Heavy Punches. Oh, those are really good. Only the first hit is cancelable, though, so be mindful of that. But the first hit also reaches super far. So it's not the worst thing to just go right to a cancel confirm or not. Thanks, yeah, thanks to that move, those dashes, she can keep her turn for quite some time. Uh, oh, okay, didn't get the follow-up. Yeah, he wanted that particular overhead. Oh, yeah, three, by the way, to cause a ground bounce and keep the combo going. But he needs to juggle. Uh-oh, what are you doing? Stop swinging. Xiao Yu. By the way, that move beats throws. So I think Xiao is going for a throw there. Just ain't a lesson got to the face. 
Xiaoyu's low confirms aren't particularly fantastic. You're gonna see her use crouch medium kick into uh, Art of Phoenix dance a lot. Ah, uh, stuff! Kazuya goes for those slaughter hook reversals pretty frequently when Electric Optus is getting too obvious. But it's rare to see it just trade like that. Well, good stuff to uh, to Kalgao for hanging in there. I'm trying to get Kagra's name out of my mouth. Sorry about that, guys. Nice. Okay, keep it simple with the second chain. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't see more stand medium kick from. Oh, nice! No cross cut DP for you, my friend! Pokey time. Still, Oh, no, didn't get the link that he wanted. Jazz got to fight her way back in. Overhead number one. Doesn't get the second one, though. And that's what I said before. Mind your face on the screen when you do those tag cancels from block boosts, because that will very determine how tight the window is for your opponent to get a happy birthday. Okay. Somatize it too, just like that. A raw tag back to Julia. Kazuya was swinging. Oh, sorry. Still uh, one more game. Let me put that back. <laughs> sorry. Woo! Okay. Let me get my head in order as Alyssa's head explodes in Julia's face. What's it gonna be? There you go. Let's wait for that. That's what I was looking for earlier. And he caught exactly. Oh no, he did get the finisher though. Jayu fights his way out. No. Electric got this for you. Just swooping right under. Hazama's still in this. He got the overhead. Look at this comeback. Play that guile theme on your iPod, everybody. Look at this. Walk up and throw. All right, momentum's back on Kaogao's side. Great throw break from Hazama. But he is still firing all cylinders. Oki? Oh, got it again! Look at this, this is falling apart rapidly. Oh, don't, don't follow up, okay. Doesn't be like some other kind of ender. And it has ended for Hazama. Kaogao is up 3-1. What a strange exchange. What a strange scramble. Kaogao's two games away from taking this. Let's do this. Nice. So we talked about whiff punishing. Thanks to the boost system, you get all kinds of benefits from tight whiff punishes, no matter the range. You saw that earlier with Julia's stand heavy punch into launcher. So much damage that did. Find your neutral. Shoot fire cross that, ladies and gentlemen. There is nothing free about it in this game. This game is very much real honest fighting. I gotta be honest with you. The top tiers in this game, they're largely an honest top tier. It's more the fact that they keep their turn a very long time, more so the fact they have anything particularly, uh, particularly game-breaking. They're honest top tiers. The Kazuyas, the Jins. Farwong's pretty ridiculous, though, as is Law. But for the most part, you can combat the top tiers with the bottom tiers and still make a pretty solid impact in this game. There are no free wins here in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. This game is real on fighting. It's why I've been supporting it for the last nine and a half years. Well, it's worked for 10 years. Let's celebrate the 10th birthday in March of 2022. Look at this. Okay, he didn't get the cross up, but you did stop whatever Kalgao wanted to do. Now it's Kalgao's turn to make things happen. Doesn't get anything though. Empty low, taking a page out of Kagura's playbook. Kalgao's tuck in the corner again. And yet again, Kazuya wins that air-to-air -air exchange. You saw that stare down when they both neutral jumped, and Kazuya still won. Xiaoyu's got some good buttons, but her air-to-airs aren't that great. If she wants to beat people jumping without an anti-air 
as God intended. There's no turning back. Little by little, Julia will force her way in on Alyssa. Alyssa has tools to keep her turn. Not gonna make a difference there though. Julia armors through with that explosion, the swift step. Uh, to get that particular version, you have to do a uh, half circle forward, light punch, and head punch at the same time. So, there's three different variants of that EX attack. That was the second variant. That one is armor. All those variants of swift step do different things on EX. Just as they do with the regular versions, each bunch is different. Huh? Okay. Got the link ring overhead. What are you swinging at? We're trying to wake up with Gothis, maybe? Meaty overhead might have sealed the deal here. Huh? 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 Chip. Nah, no need. Cross assault prolonging. Oh, he got open. Oh, it didn't get the full animation. Halsia got thrown before he left. That's unfortunate. Typically, when you get hit by that, they go flying in the air. But I guess when Alyssa starts swinging to open up Julia, it didn't get the results that he was looking for. That was a weird exchange. Usually, if that third hit connects, they're going flying. So Hazama steals one, only down 3-2 now. It's all or nothing. Fight. Ah, where are you going swinging? Yeah, Cradle Star is a cool to use. It catches a lot of guard, but typically I see it in Zoning Wars. Julia's not going to see Chuck and Plasma at Melissa. So that's an interesting thing to use for Cow Cow's Melissa. Ooh, you saw that. That's that's how Xiaoyu pressures people. Make people think about that high low gain. As you saw it there, didn't get the follow up though. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I'm assuming just based on proximity, the button that Hazan was looking for was Xiaoyu didn't come out the way he was expecting. That's a weird drop. Still got the weird drop. So when people do that as Xiaoyu, they usually buffer into the X marks the spot. Those uh, those shim shams she does that cause the ground bounce on juggles. Nice, out the counter bringing Julia. She has much more help to play with. Julia tried to go for the elbow, let your wind off is stopped in his tracks. Where's the conversion? There you go. Okay, it's better than nothing. Didn't get the conversion there though. He want to confirm. He didn't get it. Those juicy links. Yes, right now. That's a good jump in. Love it. Love it. Zama had a feeling Azia was gonna be uh, trying to be YOLO with that Electric Goblin, a great move to YOLO with, and that's when he knew it was time to attempt to jump in, and it worked out. Yep, still this his turn. So now, now they're both going for those big callouts. Alyssa loves to call people out with that Crouch Heavy Punch confirming the launcher. Julia, particularly Hazama's Julia, likes going for that Far Heavy Punch as a confirm the launcher, like that. Don't be swinging at me. That wasn't a uh, whip punch. Alright, that was just a call out. I had a feeling Alyssa would be pressing something and Hazam made the right call. Sadly, Alyssa did not make the right call there. Probably expect more of those crash medium kicks. Hazama has tied it at three. Let's do this. Zama has got his momentum back in a big way. Taogao's on the ropes. Oh my god. One thing I love about all these players, especially this region, my goodness, they got footsies. A lot of these conversions have been optimized and in many cases, esoterically lab punishes of things that are not safe on paper but are spaced very well. You can't be whipping buttons or doing unsafe buttons on anybody in this tournament. <laughs> That's nice. That was sick. So I'm going to assume with the way Absolute Guard works, that was why Hazama staggered things that way. To see which way 
Kazuya was going to be swinging. I don't think Haoga was trying to catch Xiaoyu on purpose. I think he expected Kazuya to autocorrect to be where Julia was. That's why he got Electric God Fist, because if he autocorrected, it wouldn't have been that particular input. I think what Hazama was doing there is he lingered so that play absolute guard worked, the recovery was still acting as if Kazuya was treating Xiaoyu as the point character. So yeah, that was an interesting exchange there. Kaogao regains his pride though with a nice solid perfect. Yeah, I had to break that down for a bit, that was pretty crazy. This game is not a half years old, and things have this game that still surprised me. I've played this game almost every week since this game came out. Nice, good electric. Okay. Kazuya wanted to play empty games, and Hazama stopped him in his tracks with empty games of his own. Don't play empty games with my heart, says Hazama. He wants those big buttons. Kazuya has some fantastic normals, but he can't be swinging too much. He's going for the cross arc. He wants that kill. He wants that kill. He wants that lead. And he's going to get it. Cold shoulder. And Hazama is on set point. I know sumo wrestlers with more staying power. One team wins! Great from Hazama. Because for some reason one of them didn't properly translate over. So right now it's tied at four. Won't be seeing that how got win. I couldn't get that over in time. But it should be uh, the last match. Alright, right now it's super bad. There we go. Sorry guys. Anyway, this is going to be the last match. I had to get this straight from Hazama's, uh, Hazama's game bar. Maybe a little later after that Kaoga win, but most likely to send things as is. Right now it's tied at four. Kaoga is trying to turn this around. Da, da, ba, ba, ba. Look at that. Get the Oki. Yeah, Alpha counter out. Just want to see. Good stuff. Kaoga is back in. Yeah, it's tied right now. This is the last one. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tournament thus far. Um, again, this will be the last game of the evening. Incredible that Kaoga was hung in there. Momentum was firmly on Hazama's side. A shame I can't see that game that Kaoga made that uh, tied this. As I said, some reason wouldn't uh, record properly. He went the battle log in the broadcast lobby. But he's keeping simple. He's going for a high-low game with uh, his big heavies. This is how Kazuya will be beating Jiao. You just play neutral. Oh, okay, what happened there? Bit of a blip. Uh oh, you got baited. You got baited. Kazuya alpha countered and Julia whip punished him. Throwing the CPU, Kazuya. Uh oh, they got sandwiched. But time is running out. Look at this. Oh, you could have anti aired there. Come on, Hazami, you know better. However, he got the time over, so next round should clinch it for Hazama. Come on. Yeah, I'm still crazy that I saw that Kazuya attack Xiaoyu as she was leaving. Because usually Kazuya autocorrects from that earlier game. It's still wild, as I said. This game surprised me all these years later. Such a good game. Everybody, be sure to join the cross and Discord if you've not done so already. This game is so gosh darn good. And there's still people playing it even today. This game never truly died. I made sure of that. Me, Brown Curse, Hazama. We made sure there was always a place to play Shiva cross Tech if you were looking for it. And I am proud that we have been able to show you all this footage even as spectator mode is busted. Even as all these situations occur that keeps Shiva cross Tekken from having a big revival. We're doing our due chills, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, Kazuya tried to get the overhead to get anything though. But talk about earlier, there's lots of ways to make the opponent think twice about how they're going to Oki you. Nothing's guaranteed when you get knocked down. You have to think about, they're going to roll, they're going to quickstand, they're going to just lay there, or are they going to go for the reverse? So you got to think about it. 
you make the right wrong call, the neutral truly is reset. Oh no, yeah. I don't see it happening. Good stuff. Neutral jump heavy kick and last round's gonna take it. So this has been some good sets. Yeah, I would like more people to show up, but three's better than nothing. That's why we have round robins. So we can get the most out of a small turnout and hopefully as we do more of these and get more exposure, we'll have bigger turnouts. I mean, we had some fantastic turnouts last year in 2020. My goodness. We had everybody show up. We had $340 pops thanks to Maturino. It was fantastic. It still is fantastic that people are playing because this game rules. The regular win is not nearly as safe, not nearly as much pushback, not nearly as much priority. But it's still kind of hard to punish if you're not looking for it. So be careful. Nice. Good luck with Gothis. Got it again. Bum, bum, bum. And Julie's in a bad spot. How do we get out of this? That's a good way to do it. Great punish. That's such perfect space. Now, everyone can deal with that particular move in that situation. That has a lot of range. And Kazi was using the best possible space to use that, too. This wasn't far enough to avoid Julia's crouch light kick. That was a waste of resources. Cow Gow, you're slipping, and this might be fatal. This is it. This is it, ladies and gentlemen. Hazama has sealed the deal, and sadly, it is time to boogie. I hope you have enjoyed the September 2021 edition of the Age of Region Pandora's Mayhem. I will see you in the very near future with the European matches. Talk to you later.